everyone, it's Shelby. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week of meal planning. This week, my brother is coming from New York as well as my uncle from Florida. And I'm so excited. OMG. Monday, we're going to have sheet pan fajitas. I love this recipe because it's so easy and you can feed a crowd and just toss it in the oven and it just does its thing. Wonderful recipe. I've seeded and sliced some bell peppers and now I'm just cutting up some onions for the sheet tray fajitas. I'm just going to drizzle like a tablespoon of oil on the vegetables and maybe a half a pack of fajita seasoning. I happen to find a pack in my pantry so I'm going to use it up. But you could use, you know, chili and cumin and all that. Make your own. I'm going to get this mixed up and onto a sheet tray. Now that I have it on the sheet tray, I'm just going to sprinkle on a little bit of garlic powder. I have some white chicken meat cut into strips. I'm just going to drizzle some olive oil on that as well. And take the rest of that fajita mix packet and sprinkle it on top. Get this mixed and then I'm going to turn this out onto a sheet tray as well. And we're going to get both of these sheet trays into a 350 degree preheated oven. So that's what they're going to look like when the chicken and the veggies come out of the oven. I'm just going to serve it with sour cream, guacamole, maybe some grated cheese and hot sauce. Put the tortillas in this tortilla warmer. Ken's gonna make some guacamole. So for dinner tonight we're having these fajita sheet pan tacos and they look good and the cleanup's gonna be even better. Tuesday we're spending the day on the lake and I'll insert some video for you guys because Lake Otsego is breathtaking. I know my uncle and brother are really going to enjoy this day spent with our family and I need to have a meal plan that we can throw together pretty quickly when we get home. Now I'm going to make some of those tomahawk steaks. Our family ate them for the first time just recently when my son had his birthday dinner, I got tomahawk steaks for that and they were delicious. And that was around the time that I was doing my major pantry freezer stock up and they were still on sale for $9.99 a pound, which is kind of pricey for our family. But I knew I wanted to do a special dinner for my brother and uncle when they were here. So I went ahead and purchased some at the time for this dinner. So when we get back from the lake, Ken can throw the steaks on the grill and I can go ahead and do the side dishes and we can get dinner, you know, together pretty easily and it'll be a really nice dinner. We cooked those tomahawk steaks. My uncle's here, so we're having a nice dinner. And I have a tossed salad made. Ken has taken some potatoes out of the oven. I also made some brandied mushrooms to go on the steaks. Looks like a pretty good dinner.
didn't cook dinner tonight. He did those tomahawk steaks. We have baked potato, brandied mushrooms, and a big old salad. Looks good. On Tuesday, I'm also going to put in the crock pot the Mississippi roast for Wednesday's dinner. This is an excellent recipe. And I know so many of you have suggested using chicken. I haven't done that yet, but I have it on my to-do list. But anyway, I want to get Wednesday's dinner cooked and put into meal prep containers because we have a very busy day on Wednesday. We're going to the Fenimore Art Museum, the Farmer's Museum, and possibly Howe Caverns. So it'll be so nice to know that dinner's taken care of. I made the Mississippi roast yesterday with the mashed potatoes and the asparagus and then put it in these meal prep containers. And then when we got home today, we just had to microwave it and dinner was easy peasy. Wednesday evening, I'm going to brine some chicken legs that I got for 79 cents a pound. And that's going to help them be moist and not get dried out when you fry them and have really good texture. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, buttermilk them in a bath for six hours and then go ahead and uh, get them dredged in flour and fried up. And I'll show you how to do that. I'm also gonna make Mama Dip's corn casserole. Excellent recipe. And you guys requested the strawberry cheesecake bites, so I'm gonna go ahead and incorporate them into this week's meal plan so I can show you how to do those. Those are so easy. I have a big pack of these chicken legs. They were $3.64 for the whole pack. I'm gonna get them into a brine made of one half cup of kosher salt. And if you use the table spot salt, decrease it to just a fourth of a cup because I'll show you why. The kosher salt is kind of like popcorn, where regular salt is like the kernels. So half a cup of kosher or a quarter cup of regular salt, table salt. Two tablespoons of brown sugar and about a half a gallon of water. I'm gonna get that into this food saver bag and brine this chicken. I'm just putting a double seal on my food saver bag so it doesn't leak. I always recommend putting that double seal on the bag so it doesn't leak. And then I'm just gonna get this on a sheet tray and let it uh, brine overnight in the refrigerator. And then tomorrow I'll get it in a buttermilk bath and we're gonna have some good fried chicken. <laughs> this is day two and I've had this chicken marinating in some buttermilk. I'm gonna get it dredged in some seasoned flour. And I'll make sure I put the recipe down in the description box for you guys. One of the tips I can give you guys is after you dredge the chicken and the flour, let it sit for about 20 minutes and it allows the buttermilk to absorb the flour. And it makes it kind of battery <laughs> I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> you can see how it kind of forms a little batter. Okay, I'm gonna get this fried up in my iron skillet. Just fry up the chicken. For dinner tonight, we're having some fried chicken legs. These were 79 cents a pound, very economical. I went ahead and I brined them and put them in a buttermilk bath. A little extra effort, but so worth it. Mama dips corn casserole and some watermelon. That's what we're having for dinner. I'm getting ready to make those cheesecake stuffed strawberries. I have eight ounces of softened or room temperature cream cheese, a fourth a cup of powdered sugar, and a fourth a teaspoon of vanilla. And I'm just gonna get this all mixed with my mixer. I went ahead and I put the filling in a plastic baggie and then I just cut the tip off. What you do is you take a strawberry and cut it almost to the base. so that you can kind of open it up a little bit. And then just take your filling and fill the inside. And then take a little blueberry, 
set it on top. We're going to put these back in the fridge and those are cheesecake strawberry bites. I have some sliced ham and sliced cheese that I need to use up and I thought it would be kind of fancy <laughs> to make some chicken cordon bleu for my uncle and brother. And then I'll just do a simple uh, milk gravy with mushrooms, uh, hit it with a little brandy. It'll be really good. So here's the chicken cordon bleu. Just gonna spoon over a little bit of that mushroom brandied cream sauce. Kids are gonna love this. Saturday we're going to this, it's uh, called Hyde Hall. I've never been there, but it's pretty close to the house. And I guess it's uh, like a living museum. It's run by the state. My uncle's a history buff, and so he wanted to go there. So I elected to do a pan-seared dinner. I'm making Parmesan chicken, and that Parmesan spinach orso, which is a Weight Watcher friendly, side dish it is excellent I have a video on that and all of the items that I have highlighted I'll put a recipe link in the description box showing the video that I've made it before on my channel or I'll actually type out the recipe for you guys that's a good one I'm cooking some of that Parmesan chicken in the fry pan. I have a cook with me video. I'll link it down in the description box for you guys. For dinner tonight, we're having this Parmesan chicken. I just did it right in the pan and finished it in the oven. Some Parmesan spinach orzo, which is an excellent, excellent recipe, and some green beans. Sunday is going to be the last meal with my brother and uncle, so I want it to be special, plus it's also Sunday dinner. I found that I had another one of those leg of lambs in the freezer from Easter. I paid $2.99 a pound and I was so thrilled to uh, be able to incorporate this into my meal plan. I'm also going to serve it with some of those scallop potatoes that you guys love, love, love. And I'll link that recipe for the new people uh, to the channel. It is excellent. Just a word of caution, make sure you season it enough with salt because it's a lot of potatoes. I'm going to also make my grandma's dinner rolls. Dinner is going to be so yummy. The first thing I did is I kind of took my knife and I tried to get off a lot of the extra fat cap that was on there but I left a little bit of it. The next thing I'm going to do is kind of put little slits into the meat. Take a clove of garlic that I've cut in half place it in there and then take a sprig of rosemary and stuff it in there. Try to get the rosemary inside so it doesn't burn when you're roasting it. Now that the leg of lamb has been studded with the rosemary and garlic, I'm going to just put a small amount of olive oil on top, salt and pepper. This is a big piece of meat, so be very generous. I also like to take the zest of a lemon and just put it on top. Then I like to put a little bit of this lemon juice on it too. We're going to put this into a 450 degree oven for 30 minutes and then turn down the heat to 350. It's been 30 minutes and that's what your leg of lamb will look like. I'm going to go ahead and turn the oven temperature down to 350. So then after about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, I start checking the temperature. We like our lamb at 150 degrees. And then what I do is I go ahead and I uh, tint it with aluminum foil. And I'll also put the lamb cooking chart in the description box for rare, medium, well done, etc.
So I'm going to get this tinted with some foil and let it rest for about 20 minutes. For dinner tonight, we're having roasted leg of lamb with a mint jelly, a salad, asparagus, and homemade scalloped potatoes. I'm making some of my grandma's rolls. I know the recipe by heart. <laughs> a cup of warm water, a fourth a cup of sugar, and about a tablespoon of dried yeast. I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes so the yeast can activate. Now that the yeast is activated, I'm adding two tablespoons of softened butter, a teaspoon of salt, one egg, and three and a fourth cups of flour. I'm just going to go get this all mixed together with the dough hook. I'm just going to knead it for five minutes. After kneading it for five minutes, I put it in a bowl that I sprayed with uh, cooking spray, put some saran wrap on top. I'm just going to let it sit until it doubles in size. Easy peasy. All right, this is doubled in size, so I'm going to get it turned out onto my workstation and make 18 dinner rolls. So it always makes uh, 18 rolls. I'm gonna go ahead and put a clean kitchen towel on it and let them rise. When they come out of the oven, I like to take a little bit of butter and just brush it on the top. And that's my grandma's rolls, so simple. They come out perfect every time. As far as my grocery list this week, I don't need to get too many things. I'm gonna pick up some mushrooms, spinach, asparagus, green beans, heavy cream, always need milk in our house, and some flour tortillas. Our grocery haul this week is 11 ounces of baby spinach, some green beans, asparagus, some baby bella mushrooms, and white mushrooms. It was cheaper to buy them sliced. Normally that's not the case some heavy cream, light cream, a gallon of milk, and we actually got four of these packages of flour tortillas. So we actually went to the store twice. Ken went one time and he got the four packages of flour tortillas. Those were a total of $8. And then the rest of the grocery items, $26.69. So the total for this week was $34.69. Well, that's our menu plan for this week. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Happy meal planning, and I'll talk to you guys later. Mm -hmm.